Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, along with A Tone Productions. And we want you all to walk with us on this journey in freeing Jennifer Jeffrey. I had an opportunity to converse with her mother, Miss Jackie. And I want you all to pay close attention because this is America's fight. I want all you freedom fighters and everyone that's out there for justice to help us in freeing Jennifer Jeffrey. And let's all look at her case. And I hope you enjoy this interview. Verbal Pick Radio, we'll be right back. Today, we're going over to Jennifer Jeffries' case as promised. I told you all that I was studying law and that I was in a profession of law or who was attempting to become a lawyer or attorney to use this case as a case study in which we're going to go over points and definitions and titles and dealing with the Jennifer Jeffries case. Now, the reason why I'm standing by this window is because you attorneys and wannabe lawyers, you all can look out your front window and you can see society, you can see light. You can go outside, you can walk to the park, but that's not in the case of Jennifer Jeffrey. We're gonna get into the terminology and the definition of custody. But I just also wanted to recognize her mother who's here, Miss Jackie Jeffrey. Thank you, Miss Jeffrey, for being awesome. Thank you very much. Because one, there's nothing like a mother's love for a child. You can't compare that. I didn't see cases where a child was under a car and that that strength of the mother and that love and that will move that car off a child. I didn't see parents fight bad, get dogs off their children. And now we have to deal with human beings who for some reason don't want to give the same justice when it comes to people of color and we want to exploit that as well. But we're here on behalf of Jennifer Jeffrey because I take this case personally, as you see, just for Jennifer Jeffrey. And I want to see her home soon. And I want all you lawyers and everybody to get involved in this case. This case has notoriety. Uh, the case was on Crime Watch and um, other shows. We're going to get into that. But before I sit down, and discuss this topic uh, with the mother, Jennifer Jeffrey. I want to go over the definition of custody, which you already know, the judges know, attorneys know, and those of you studying know. But I want to show you how they railroaded this young lady, right? Now, what is the difference between police custody and judicial custody in criminal procedure code? How long can an accused be detained under police or judicial custody? When a person accused of a cognizable offense is arrested and detained by the police and produced within 24 hours, or he or she surrenders before the nearest magistrate, then the magistrate can either release he or she on bail or he can either send him to judicial custody or to police custody. If the accused is juvenile, his or her age is to be uh, ascertained, and if he finds that he or she is juvenile, then he or she be directed to be produced before juvenile justice board. A suspect under police custody or judicial custody is assumed to be a suspect. A suspect becomes a criminal only after the court finds him or her guilty and convicts him or her for the crime reported of. These types of custodies are preventive measures. A police officer in charge of a suspect may treat the suspect arbitrarily. In case of arrest by police and pending the investigation, the lawyer of a suspect generally prays for a bail or judicial custody. In judicial custody, suspects become responsibility of the court. Police custody with permission to interrogate during judicial custody. The police officer in charge of the case is not allowed to interrogate the suspect. However, the court may allow 
the interrogations to be conducted if it opinions, meaning in the opinion, the interrogation being necessary under the facts produced before the court. So, Ms. Jeffrey, Ms. Jeffrey as I understand, Detective Swanson arrived at the house. Yes. Pick Jennifer Jeffrey up. Yes. From that point on, she was in custody. Now, he also interrogated her. Yes. Now, did they uh, perform or show you any type of documentation uh, showing uh, that he took uh, or he went to the magistrate and asked the magistrate for permission to interrogate Jennifer Jeffrey? He never showed me anything. Now, so that means then that he wasn't allowed to even ask Jennifer Jeffrey anything since he brought her into custody. See, what I'm understanding by going over this case, right, and some of the names that I like to mention, I, I won't mention uh, due to uh, circumstances of this case, only one, which is uh, the uh, an older brother who was there at the scene who recently passed, and he was shot during a robbery attempt. And what was his name? Uh, they called him, his nickname was Youngster. Right. Okay, now, that old one who, who's not here anymore, right? And, I, and the only reason why I brought that up is because you railroaded a lamb, an innocent person, and the bad actors was allowed to continue to do what was in their heart and continue on with their behavior on in life to inflict pain upon others, is all I'm saying. Because you fail to do your duty within this justice system. Basically, that, that's what I'm saying. Now, I want you, I don't want you all to, to, to forget the fact of, of custody, the fact that the um, officer that took Jennifer Jeffrey into custody was also the one interrogator. And I want you all to uh, picture this in your mind. And, and this is this is for the, the, the audience, but, also, but, it, but it's mainly for you want to be lawyers and attorneys who I told you all to study this case, right? If we ever going to correct this injustice system, because as it stated, where there's no justice, there will be no peace. And you can see that there's no peace in this current state that we're in now. Okay. But now, but I want you all to imagine, here's a 15 year old female, right? Her mother wasn't present at the time that the police arrived and took her to the police station. Grandmother wasn't there. No counsel, no attorney wasn't there. Now, how long would you say the ride from where they picked Jennifer Jeffrey up, where you're staying, to the police station? From that distance, I'm thinking, and from what I understand, this had to be from 35 by 45 minute ride. Depending on the traffic. And depending on the traffic. Day. So now here's a young lady who's afraid in the back of a police car. For 35 to 45 minutes, do you think that there was no conversation going on? You don't think he's asking a question, interrogating her right there on the spot, in the car, because she was in custody at that time, right? She was railroaded. Now, I want to read this. We're we, we getting on, we're getting on. Now, in points one through five, appellant claims the trial court error by denying her motion to suppress her written and oral statements. Appellant contends the statements were illegally taken because she was in custody and should have been read her Miranda and juvenile warnings. Because the issue of custody does not turn on the credibility or demeanor of witnesses in this case, we review de novo the trial court's legal determination that the appellant was not in custody at the time she gave the statement to Allie. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You pick her up. She's in custody. You railroad her. Type up a document. Tell a young lady, if you sign this, you'll be able to go home. And then the, the judge, the magistrate, then you come and say, well, 
she gave this on her own volition, on her own free will, because she wasn't in custody. And that that is what uh, has her behind prison bars since 1996 to this day, because they wouldn't throw out her testimony that was coerced and given under duress. Because imagine, uh, you lawyers who have 15-year-old girl or 15-year-old boy driven away by police, you're not their prison, and they're being interrogated by adults, and their mind is still developing at that age. She didn't stand a chance. And then there, there's Swanson and Allen playing the good cop, bad cop role. You know, they tag teaming a 15 year old. I mean, they should be ashamed of themselves, right? And so from that point on, she in custody, behind bars, she's sleeping, she's hungry. When her mother calls up there, when you call up there to find out where she was at and speak to her, what was the response they gave you? Well, when I first called, she said she's doing okay, she's in good hands, and I'll bring her on with 30 minutes. Well, but, but did they tell you that they were interrogating her? No, never one time said it. Uh, what, what's, what's going on? What's, see, this is, this is the point of being railroaded. You know, they purposely uh, did that so they can pin the case and wouldn't have to do much police work, which is they're being paid by tax dollars. And and then they came up with a scenario or they agreed upon or amongst each other that this is what we're gonna do. You know, we, we're gonna railroad the parents. You know, we're gonna type up a, a confession. We're gonna tell her, look, if you sign this, you'll be able to go home. And once she signed it and didn't realize her rights, who at 15 years old, know how to distinguish uh, what's beneficial to them at that age. When I was 15, I didn't know. I, if I, if, when I was 15, I asked my parents for every everything under the sun. If, if I had a question or something I didn't understand, it was many that I didn't understand. She had to go to your parents, okay, what is this? What, what is this about? Okay, what is this? I don't, what does this word mean? Well, some of these words that was in the transcript, uh, Eight grade and eight grade, fifteen years old, eight grade. They weren't going over those words in school and definitions and writing those words down. These was this, this was a foreign language to her, right? We 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 we're moving on. We're moving on because I want to get to this right. Right. No, um, the circumstances pertinent to this appeal filed in subsection fifty one of the Family Code. Subsection 51.095A1 provides that a child written statement is admissible if the same statement is made in writing while the child is in custody of an officer, right? Now, I'm going to say that again. This is subsection 51.095A1 provides that a child's written statement is admissible if the statement is made in writing while the child is in custody of an officer in a detention facility or other place of confinement. The police vehicle is a place of confinement. Or in possession of the Department of Protective and Regulatory Services at some time before making the statement. Sometime before making a statement, if the child is in custody, then what is written is allowed as uh, as a statement and is allowed by the courts, right? Okay, but 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 we but we want to go back though. We want to go back, right? We want to go back because they said that I want to say what they said because the issue of custody does not turn on the credibility or demeanor of witnesses in this case. We review de novo the trial court's legal determination that appellant was not in custody at the time at the time she gave the statement to Allen 
issues involving substantive rights of pre-transfer juveniles, such as legality of detention or a confession, though raised in a criminal form, meaning that they saying that they couldn't throw out her statement because she wasn't in custody. All right? But then they come back later and said that we will allow her written statement because she was in custody. They contradicting themselves. Okay, well, you're not gonna throw, you're not gonna throw her statement out because she gave a statement while she wasn't in custody. But then you're gonna say well, we're gonna use it against you because you gave your statement because she was in custody. And what pisses me off is that legal minds they saw this, they know this, they saw it, but they was too cowardly to come forth and say, uh, or they didn't care. And that's where it comes into when I say people of color. Because when it comes to people of color, if you don't have the heart to dig deep and, and pull out and extract some of the wrong behaviors that's done by this judicial system, they will sweep it under the rug because uh, the, the Caucasians, and I'm not using this as, as, as a racist or a statement or whatever, but they don't care about our children. They're not gonna go in there and dig and find out. And some, well, and some lawyers not. That's how you got some lazy lawyers too, of all kinds, that's not gonna go in there and show the contradictions in the case and be like, you can't, that's, 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 that's a double standard. You know, either you're gonna uh, uh, allow it in and you're gonna say she was in custody, or you're gonna say that she was not in custody, so uh, they couldn't throw out the statement. That's that's it's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And we're going to get more into the case. Uh, and I want to sit down and then we're going to be at the round table. We're going to chop it up. So y'all follow me over here. I'm going to chop this up. You know, I'm, I'm you know, I, I want you, I'm, I'm, I'm upset as a parent because this can happen to my child. God, this could be anybody's child. Matter of fact, this has happened to anybody's child. And in this season where everyone is fighting for justice, for those that passed on, whether it's Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, uh, you know, those who uh, died uh, recently that we discussed, George Floyd, Jennifer's still alive. And this is one that we can't say, you know? And, and I want the public to do their due diligence and research, become, become lawyers. And, and, and let's petition these courts to right this wrong, you know? Now, Miss Jeffrey, so you weren't able to reach Jennifer over the telephone because they were railroading you saying she's at one place and that she was at another place. Is that right? They didn't tell me she was going down there. No. He never told me. And when and when your your mother, uh, when she said, "Well, okay, well, hold on, let me ride with you all," mm-hmm. where did he tell her? He didn't have any room in the car. He didn't have any room in his car. And it was just the Swanson and Jennifer. And Katie, it was the third person. And third people. But yet, you don't have a room in your car for the money. So she said, okay, well, let me go back in the house and get my purse and my father in bed. And, 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 and by the time she walked outside, she was gone. they were gone. But they didn't tell you, the, 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 the parent or any adult, uh, where they was taking the child to. No. So that's, that's, that's kidnapping. That's kidnapping. That's how long you did too. You, you kidnapped the child. Because you knew she was a child. And you drove her down to the police station and written a statement. Said if you sign this statement, you can go home. Now, I gotta imagine, come on, man. Look, 15 years old, uh, what time did they say that they picked her up? No. It might, they might. Uh, Swanson, I, I believe he said somewhere around 1.35. Or you know, one thirty-five. You pick up one thirty-five. Now, she still they not provide that she's home. She 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 sleeping. The, uh, and uh, that's excuse me, I think I'm wrong with that. I think he said he picked her up at two forty. At two forty. Mm-hmm. Okay. So 
240. Swanson said he picked him up. Mm-hmm. And then what time did uh, Alan say he interrogated her? Alan said he saw Jennifer for the first time to interrogate her at 245. So the only way you can get from the Arbor, the Arbor, the Arbor. Green Arbor. Mm-hmm. Only you can get from Green Arbor to the downtown Houston. You can't do that in five minutes. Yeah. And, 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 and yeah, no, it's not happening. We, we, and we're not living in a time of the Jetsons to where you, you got this uh, uh, contraption that can fly you over the city. So, mistake. Another mistake. Another red flag, right? Another red flag. So she's by herself, being interrogated. Right? She's afraid. You know, and from two forty until what time were you able to speak with her? If it, it was later, it was it? I think it was close to eight o'clock in the evening. Close to eight o'clock in the evening, they can finally get through. So let's say around five hours, twenty minutes. To five hours, twenty minutes to six hours. She being held against her will. Okay. Yeah, and she's been held back. But look, before we go, right, all of you out there laying this base of independence, land grab, get in touch uh, with us today, uh, myself and Jacora Burks, Vero Pick Radio, we'll be back. Okay, now, I'm, I'm upset, but, you know, it's that, that, that Houston upsetness and the demeanor of Miss Jackie, from, from where she's from, she, you can tell she's a, 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 a mild-mannered person with love in her heart. And so, I don't want to curse y'all a lot in front of this nice lady. But I'm here, you're going to kidnap somebody's child for six hours and run this game, and I don't think nobody going to hold you accountable to it in Texas. It's, it's not happening. I, that that is ridiculous, you know. You need to learn to stop playing with us as a people, and thinking that you can use us as a doormat and do anything you want to our children. Everybody knows the proper protocol of dealing with anybody's child. You make sure you get in touch with that parent. You make sure an attorney is present. You treat that child because the child only been on the planet for 15 years at the time. Damn, and then you and then you want to charge a, a female who don't even have the strength to even uh, do such a crime anyway with some of the evidence that I read with a, a, a pot iron or whatnot. Uh, I, something dealing with a pot, but the weight, I'm understanding this, at her age, couldn't even deal, pick something up like that and, and move it the way that she was being accused of. But I'm really upset the fact that adults, you showing prejudice towards people of color, person of color, when you don't go beyond your scope of thinking to assure justice, to assure that she's innocent in every way you didn't even provide her with that you 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 didn't even prove that she was guilty but what you did was you did sloppy lazy police work and you just wanted to charge someone so you can go home and eat your meal and sleep at night i don't even know how you can even sleep at night or even look yourselves in the mirror. But I do know that uh, somebody got caught up. And can we, wait, I mentioned, we mentioned this though. Can we mention the, the, the attorney who did the drunk driver hit and struck someone? I don't see why not. Now was that, that was her court appointment, right? Yeah. Man, show me how, how, how karma works, right? Her court-appointed attorney coming home from a party drinking killed someone. And what happened to him after that? He didn't go to jail. Didn't go to jail. 
he actually murdered someone drinking and driving. How court appointed? Now, on a court appointed, how much time did he spend prepping Jennifer for her case? Prepping Jennifer? Right. He never did. Can you give his name? You can give his name. What's his name? His name was Brian Cole. Brian Cole. 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 Brian Cole. Didn't even prep the young lady before her trial. And what did God do to him? You run, and now you murdered somebody. But look how the, it's showing you how the justice works for white privilege versus a person of color. He didn't go to jail for murder while he was driving drunk, right? But here go a 15-year-old accused of a crime that she didn't commit, and the only thing that railroaded her or got her in there is that they wouldn't throw out the testimony that she gave uh, was coerced, and she that she gave uh, simply because they was lying and said that she wasn't in custody at the time she gave the statement. Then they come back and say, well, we will allow this the statement that she wrote because she was in custody at the time when it was a written statement. And and he that was so simple. He failed her because I'm not even an attorney when I studied this case. And I saw the errors. So that means that he went in, either he cut a deal, or he went in there with blind focus on, right? And he totally disregard uh, the facts of the case. And what happens to him, it shows you two sides. White privilege, kill someone, drunk driving accident, hey, no jail. Young female, person of color, just, just being in the wrong place at the wrong time, just being falsely accused, and you can be behind bars for over 30 years. I mean, that is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. I, I know. And and then the other other ones that was involved. Oh, you should see how they like turned up. You know, dying because of a uh, robbery, trying to rob somebody. Uh, it's, it's 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 ridiculous. And yet the lamb, the innocent one, is still waiting for her day of freedom from being uh, in prison for over. 30 something odd years for a crime she didn't commit. And I can't believe the whole state of Texas is not outraged. Although our first uh, interview that we did, mm -hmm. uh, I get so many comments. It is a lot of people that's frustrated, wondering what is going on. Now, Trump, Biden, if you want my vote, then you free Jennifer Jennifer. You want a lot, if you want over 100,000 votes, free Jennifer Jim. That's voting in my best interest. And it wouldn't be in my best interest to vote for either one of you if you don't release Jennifer Jim. Greg Abbott, state of Texas, release. It makes no sense to try to turn your back on someone when all of these red flags are connected with this case. It, it, just, it, it makes no sense. But how is Jennifer holding out? How is she holding up so far? She's doing good. Um, Great. She's sought ways to keep herself busy and preoccupied. Um, from getting her GED to going to college and working on a bachelor's degree, actually a bachelor's degree. And she was working for more than one bachelor's degree because she said, when I come home, I'm gonna be ready. Come on, that's right, she's coming home. That, that's the power, the power of the mind. But society owes her a, a great deal. Society owes her a great deal. You know, we owe her. She, she, she paying a, a debt to society for something that tell that she didn't uh, uh, do, she didn't borrow against. 
you know. And it, it's 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 just it's it's ridiculous. It's I mean, you know, so you know, trying to conduct the interview and 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 not let this situation touch you at the same time, you you fight me most, you know. Um, as I stated, all of you, all of you who study in law, bring this case to your professor and and point out um, what I've showed. Research uh, the. Uh, Jennifer Jeffries, a, a, a pettit case for her, her appeal, and how she was railroaded in the sorry, no good, so and so, son of a so and so. Didn't even call him out on it. You know, it's like, it's like we as a people, look, man, we gotta, I don't care about voting and Trump and president and, and, and all of that because we've been we've been screaming the same thing since I can remember no justice no peace police brutality we want job we want this I've been seeing that for over and over and over and over what you need to do is hit those books get in the law profession and then get on the Supreme Court because that's a lifetime then you make changes in the Supreme Court. Just like Trump just did when he put his pick in there that's gonna be there for generations. That's what it's all about. Black folks raise, raise your children to get involved in this system so they can help out the missing fortune and those who have been railroaded by this system to come and work for the community, man. Because if we don't do it, who else is gonna do it, you know? But I do wanna thank all of those that's out there, all the advocate groups, all the, 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 the attorneys that's giving their time, all the people that's keeping this uh, in the media and in the public's eye, I do want to thank you all, you know, for helping out, you know, because this case we can't let go, and this one we just can't let them be railroaded like that. It, you know, we gotta protect a, a, a female. You know, we gotta protect this female. What, what, what does it say, Brother Moore? Respect what is, and protect the black female. Respect and protect the black, black female. And, and no nation can what? Rise no higher than the woman. Well, come on, man. We got to do something. We got to build, you know. But before we get out of here, Ms. Jack, I know I've been rambling. I, and I'm not, but it, you know, it was just, it it, it pisses me up, you know. But anything you'd like to add before we, before we go on, or you'd like to, 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 to tell the public, you know, because this was more of pointing out errors and how they do people of color in this system and no one challenge, no one on the other side challenge their peers and say, come on, man, even the judge, the, the, the detectives, you know, the people that's uh, working the scene, the, 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 uh, the, the court appointed attorney. Man, hey, well, how can this how can this happen? The concurrent mystery. So the one thing that we're looking for right now, because the officers did such a um, type of job that they did on this case, we're looking for anyone during that period of time who might have heard anything, who might have seen anything, who might know anything about that case and who did what and who was involved. It would be very helpful to contact Vince um, yeah. and let him know uh, anything about the case. Uh, we're It's like the only information they have about the case is what the detective said and that was the detective's theory. We're looking for someone who knows the truth and who's willing to come out now even though it's been 23 years to come out and tell the truth so that my daughter can come home and I appreciate it and I thank everyone. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid in the Palomino family do the right thing and come forward and request and demand the release of Jennifer Jeffrey. Read over it and you will see how she was railroaded. And, and then read what happened to the lives of the other individuals that was involved in this case and how they wound up. It's evident. I mean, you, you know, it's evident. It's evident. Read. Go and look at these names and, and, and see where they ended up in life, and you will know uh, you will know the truth. 
I hope you all enjoyed the interview and the conversation that I had with Jennifer Jeffrey's mother. And I want all of you all to look up this case, get involved, contact anyone you know or representative in Texas to help and do whatever you can to get Jennifer Jeffrey released and sent back home to her family where she belongs. Thank you all for tuning in. Vogue Peak Radio along with A-Tone Productions. We'll see you next time.